Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Roadrunner Tutorials here with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to be creating a three-dimensional phone. Let's get started. So I have After Effects open up on my screen and the first thing we're going to do is create a new composition. And we're going to title this one, Phone. So I have two files here, and one is actually just a picture of a phone. I'm going to hit S to scale this down. So you could create a two-dimensional phone in Illustrator or Photoshop and import it into After Effects. However, today I'm going to be covering just how to do this in After Effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating a shape layer for this base layer here. I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard and cycle through my shapes until I get the rounded rectangle. I'm going to change my color of my stroke to be a nice gray and hit OK. Then I'm just going to go ahead and draw this on here and make it about as close to the size of the phone as we can. And now I'm going to zoom in until I can see the corners here. And I'm going to search in this box, round. And roundness should come up under this rectangle. And we're just going to change this until it meets the roundedness of the phone. So for me, it's about 65. I'm going to hit the Option or Alt and the forward slash to fit my composition to my window. I'm going to copy this color code from the stroke. And I'm going to paste it into the fill. Hit OK. And we're going to label this one None because the gray fits the gray. And I'm going to hit Enter and label this one Base. Then I'm going to duplicate it, hit S to scale this down, and I'm just gonna scale it down only by two or three. And then I'm going to change the fill to be a nice white color. And I'm gonna get rid of the stroke. Awesome, now if we solo this, you'll kinda see where I'm going with this. Now we're going to label this one, and we're gonna go screen bottom. Next, I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard to bring up the rectangle. And I'm going to make this the size of the screen. I'm going to hit the tilde key to maximize this panel. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but I like to get it as close as I can. And I'm going to hit the alter option and the forward slash to fit my composition to my window. And now if we view all these layers, we'll kind of see where this is. And we just want to get this screen as close to the middle as possible here. And that looks good. Now I'm going to disable all of these layers and I'm going to label this one screen top. And I'm going to change the color to be black. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do the home button, the speaker, the camera. Next, I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard till we get the circle. I'm going to change the stroke to be a nice gray color. Hit OK. I'm going to zoom in here and hold down spacebar to use the hand tool. And I'm going to hold down shift while I draw this circle. So it'll make it a perfect circle. And then I'm going to hit V for my select tool. And I'm going to put that right over the home button. And I'm actually going to change the stroke to be about four. And that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to hit Q again. And I'm actually going to change this to be black. And I'm going to change the stroke to 1 and the fill to black. Hit OK. And again, holding the Shift key while I draw this circle. And I'm going to fit that right over there. I'm actually going to hit Command D to duplicate it. And then I'm going to drag this one right over here. And you'll notice the anchor point, I would like it to be in the middle, so I'm going to click on this layer. I'm going to hold the command key and double click my pan behind tool. And boom, the anchor point changes to the middle of this. So when I scale it down, it scales from the middle. I'm going to move that right over here. Then I'm going to hit G and bring up my pen tool. I'm going to click right here and hold shift and go to the end. I'm going to get rid of the fill. And I'm going to change the stroke width to be about six. And I'm going to move this up a little bit. Then I'm going to come over here and search cap. And we're going to change the butt cap to a round cap. And there we go. 
And then I'm going to label these. Then I'm going to click this one, hold shift and go to the top one. And then I'm also going to do command shift and C to pre-compose this. And I'm gonna label this one and hit okay. And now if we disable the picture and enable all of the other layers, you'll notice this phone is coming together pretty nicely. However, it doesn't look great just yet. So I'm going to go to the screen top and I'm going to hit Command Shift and C and this is going to be the screen comp. I'm going to double click in here. I have this logo for my screen. I'm going to hit S and I'm going to scale this way down and drag it underneath. I'm going to right click New and Solid and use the eyedropper tool. Hit OK. I'm going to drag this below everything and I'm going to select these two and pre-compose this to be logo. Then I'm going to click on my screen outline, the screen top, and I'm gonna go layer and auto trace and hit okay. And it comes up with this solid layer that has this shape masked out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit M and you'll notice it masks out the inside and the outside. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna figure out which mask is the outside and that appears to be the yellow. So we're gonna copy that one and we're going to paste it onto our logo composition and that will trim it down. And then we're gonna go here and disable this layer. And when we go back out, you'll notice it creates what's ever on the screen. And if we wanna see how that looks, I can enable the guide photo and I can move it over and so far that looks pretty good and a trick that i did learn recently is that if you would like to see what's going on in this composition you can always lock it and we can double click on this one and it will bring up this composition and we can actually drag this off to the side and then we can see how it affects it in the composition so if i want to move this home button over you'll notice it's moving in this composition and you'll notice the changes in this one as well and before we finish up today's tutorial feel free to hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon to get notified when i post a new video also comment down below what you'd like to see in future tutorials thanks so much so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to disable the phone picture and we're going to hide it and then we're going to check the 3d box on all of these you're probably like what the heck all of my stuff is gone actually no it's not we're going to select these hit p and you'll notice the Z position for all of these is set to zero. And what we wanna do is we wanna offset them all by one from the other. So we're gonna do one for the base. We're gonna leave the screen bottom to zero. We're gonna change this one to, let's say negative three and change this one to negative two. And there we go. Now the next thing you're gonna wanna do is go down here to geometry options. And we're going to extrude this phone about 35. And what we can do is we can solo this. And I'm going to add an angular bevel of about 5. And you're probably like, what the heck? I can't really see any extrusion. So we're going to right click, go new, and set up a light, and hit OK. Now you're probably noticing this shadow on the edges. And that means you just have to move the Z position of this light to be further away. You can also go over here to your light layer, hit P, and you can move the Z position closer or further. If I click my base layer and hit R and rotate the Y, and if I zoom in here just a little bit, you should be able to see the edge and some shadow from the light. So that's how we know that this layer is for sure extruded. Set that back to zero. And now what we want to do is we want to have one thing that controls all of these layers. So we're going to set up a null. So we're going to right click, go new and null object. And you'll see this red box here. And this is just letting you know that there is a null object. When you render this, this will not be here. So don't freak out when you see that red box. So we're going to go down here. We're going to rename the null to phone controller. And we're going to select all of the phone layers and we're going to use the pick whip tool to parent them to the phone controller. And you'll notice all of these here should say phone controller. And now 
I can hit R on the null and check the 3D box. And you'll notice now it gives me all of the three-dimensional options. And we can just rotate this any way we'd like. So in order to create the volume up, volume down, and the power button, we're going to unhide our phone layer. And we're going to click the I to enable it. And we're going to solo it. And I'm going to shift that over here. And I'm going to disable this light for now. Now I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard until I see the rounded rectangle tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw about the size of the volume button. And I'm going to change this one to volume up. I'm going to click the 3D box. I'm going to go to geometry options. And I'm going to extrude this one, I would say about 20 and I'm going to add an angular bevel. I think for now the bevel depth set to two should work just okay. So now what we're gonna do is Command D to duplicate this one and using my shift and arrow keys, I'm going to move this one down and I'm gonna change this one to volume down. Then I'm going to duplicate that one again and I'm gonna change this one to power button. I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard and I'm going to move this one over and I'm going to move it up. Now I'm gonna click the top one and hold shift and the bottom one, I'm gonna come up here to my pan behind tool and I'm gonna hold command and double click the pan behind tool which will put all of the anchor points right in the center. Then I'm going to take my power button and I'm gonna rotate it negative 90 degrees and pour my volume up and volume down, I'm gonna do those 90 degrees on the Y rotation. Then I'm going to select all, hit U to close those up, and I'm gonna move these down below. And I'm going to parent these also to my phone controller. And then I'm going to disable my phone picture and enable all the other ones. I'm gonna click on the power button layer and hold shift and go down all the way here. And using my shift and arrow keys, I'm going to move these over until they would fit about where they would be on the phone. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on all of them and hit P again. And right here, we can change the 3D view from active camera to top. And you'll notice here we can see these layers. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna change their Z position to go right about here. We can change this to be active camera. And now if I zoom in here, I can see that the buttons fit pretty well. And now if I rotate the null, I can actually see the buttons sitting on the side. I think this looks pretty good. However, there are just a few changes I would make. I don't think these buttons are very wide. So if I come down here, I can toggle this down, go to contents, rectangle, transform, and I can unlink this scale right here. And I can change the X to be a little bit wider. And if I want it to be a little bit longer, I can also change the scale of that as well. And go ahead and take this time and feel free to play around with yours. Now I can come over to my null and hit R, and I'm gonna set this back to be zero. I'm going to create a keyframe and I'm gonna go all the way to the end of my composition and I'm gonna change this to be one time around. And let's see how that looks. Thank you so much everyone for joining me for this After Effects tutorial. Feel free to comment down below what you'd like to see in future videos. Thanks so much, take it easy.